Hi everyone, welcome back to G'day Namaste. Um, if you haven't watched my first foreigner feature with Kat, which I did last month, the link will be at the top. But today I have Terry, so she's from um, Czech Republic and she's now living in Chennai. So she's today's guest uh, for uh, foreigner feature on G'day Namaste. So thanks for coming, Terry. If you wanted to, to start by a bit of a self-introduction, where you live, why you moved to India, what Hi. you do. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Terry. Um, as Amanda said, I'm from Czech Republic. I always used to say a little country from Central Europe, but we are not that small, okay? Um, but anyways, it's been four years since I've been living uh, here in Chennai. I think next month it's gonna be four years on the dot. Um, I work as a yoga teacher right now. I have two indie dogs. And um, yeah, so when there is so much to say, I mean, I came first to India when I was 17. Uh, at that time, I was studying law and uh, social work. And I was always drawn into Asia and Africa. So when I was a little kid, I was sure I want to work in Africa. And I always used to say that to my mom. I guess I didn't know India back then. Um, but yeah, somehow I got uh, into India and I was looking for volunteering opportunities and um, um, afterwards I left and I really miss that place. I think all the foreigners that will be on these episodes will say that when they first came to India, it was a huge shock, but at the same time we are here, right? So we loved it. Mm -hmm. um, so I was fascinated by this absolutely what seemed like different planet and I was sure I want to come back. Um, but you know, then life happened. Um, I started working in Ireland after my studies. I was there for two years. And I think I have to pause on the Ireland part because a lot of things have happened. <laughs> I uh, am not very active on um, my YouTube channel now, but I, I sing, I play guitar, um, I write my songs. And I used to upload lots of Hindi songs um, online as well. And this was March 2015 when one of the songs went really viral. And I started getting so many messages like from everywhere, everybody in India. And I really wanted to reply to everybody and to say thank you and thank you for listening. And um, yeah, there was this person that uh, was talking to me and the conversation involved. And um, he was telling me, yeah, I'm, I'm a pilot, but I'm unemployed at this moment. I was like, OK, wait a second. How does that work? Like, I don't know any pilots. I want to know more. Uh, so we started talking more and more and I was already planning my big uh, trip to India that September and I was like you know what we can just meet when I'm when I'm there and you can travel with me so now he's my husband now he's employed <laughs> still a pilot and uh, yeah we've been living in Chennai for four years wow what a story that's incredible yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you for sharing so um, one of the, I guess, biggest questions I'm sure you probably get as a foreigner living in India and I get all the time as well is what it's like living in India and some of the hardest things you struggle with. Right. Yes, you're right. Everybody asks that. And because we are here for some quiet time now, a lot of things that seem shocking to other people from outside seem mm -hmm. kind of normal. So <laughs> yeah. when somebody asks that, you know, it's okay <laughs> it's fine but um yeah when i'm away i always miss india i cannot wait to you know get back home but you know how it is you're you always miss the place when you are not yes. um but um my husband always jokes that i'm more desi than him like he would love to move away and outside india but i'm like you know what i'm gonna miss it like i cannot i'm not ready to do that step yet so yeah. it's a bit funny but um yeah, of course, there are so many struggles. Um, a lot of them became a little easier as the time just passed by. I think what you and me have in common is that we um, we experienced the COVID here. So it was a bit uh, tough, especially during COVID, because it felt like we lost two years of our mm -hmm. lives here. Um, yeah. But the first thing that I really struggled a lot, and I think that we will all will agree on, is the independence. Yeah. So I used to work 12 hour shifts i used to you know live alone i used to be able to get anything from outside that i needed mm. but suddenly you come here and it's not only holiday anymore you know like 
I'm, I'm, this is my home. Like I have to stay here. I have to eventually work here. I have to just get by. So even though I visited India, I think uh, before I moved here permanently, I, I've been here for times around uh -huh. it was still a shock and especially since we went uh, direct to south i had never really been to south much so chennai is very different than delhi uh -huh. uh, the people are different. the food is different the weather oh my god is different um, yeah so definitely uh, i lost my independence suddenly uh -huh. i was dependent on my husband because you're on visa as you start you cannot work you can't even volunteer which was uh -huh. a shocker for me because that's what I kind of dependent on. I'm like, okay, I'm, I will get some experience and, yeah. and you know, it will be fine. But you cannot do all of all those things on visa. So yeah. that was one thing. Um, then, of course, the weather. Um, it's so hot. It is so <laughs> hot. Chennai does not even have a nice month. It's like hot, hotter and hottest. <laughs> like so, uh, and people keep asking me, especially my family and my friends, like, did you get used to the weather by now? I'm just like, nope, I did not. <laughs> um, what, is, what is so funny is that I stopped being used to the cold. So in Czech, we can get winters that have like minus 20. Yeah. And now when I go home, it's just like two degrees. I'm like freezing and my parents are like scolding me like what's wrong with you like you've been born in this like what are you doing so it's funny i didn't get used to the hotness yeah but, uh, you know i stopped being resistant to the cold. yeah which is which is kind of funny i don't know if in australia we have cold months as well i guess you do right yeah but in south in the southern parts of australia so where i lived in brisbane it's probably i get the same cold as i do in chendigate to be honest the, the weather's really similar but in like southern okay. parts of Australia, because it's closer to the, mm. the southern equator, whatever. Anyway, um, because it's south, it's actually like kind of opposite to India. So south <laughs> is hot. Northern Australia is hot, but southern Australia is okay. cold. So like Tasmania, the tiny little island state at the bottom of the country, I'm fairly sure is cold most of the time. Um, and they get snow and very, very cold mm. winters. But like I've never seen snow in Australia mm. because I've just never been in living in a climate <laughs> where it's close by. Yeah. But I used to live in a city called Darwin, yes. which basically is like Chennai. It's hot, hotter, hotter, monsoon, or they call it the wet season there. Yeah. And it was just hot all year round. And mm. I remember working and it was like we had a cold snap and it was 18 degrees and we were all wearing jackets because <laughs> 18 degrees Celsius and we were freezing because we're just so used to hot weather <laughs> but what yeah. i um yeah. no that's it right now when i go home i'm the one that's frozen and it's like wrapped up and my parents are like in shorts and everything yeah and <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's funny it's funny how fun works yeah so yeah weather was another thing for mm -hmm. sure uh, then families away of course i think that is one of the hardest thing especially when you first leave your home mm. um and because it's so far the tickets are so expensive so it's not yeah. like you can go home you know so so often yeah. and it takes ages as well so mm -hmm. um my mom like she won't fly here because she's scared to change the flights and get lost <laughs> so it's a it, it's a bit difficult um yeah. and um yeah of course um the language so we are in Chennai, my husband doesn't know Tamil. I don't know Tamil, nobody knows Tamil here in our household. Uh, but we get by. Um, so he's from Delhi, originally Bihar, so uh, his family speaks Hindi. So um, that's what I know, that's what I keep learning. I mm. feel like, I don't know if you have it the same way, but I can understand a lot. But then speaking is a little bit harder because uh, we don't have the grammar like they do, they we don't just understand. We cannot understand what they're saying, but then to form the sentence yeah. is a bit tough. Now we uh, very recently we got uh, house help for the dogs when we are traveling, and she doesn't know English, so so it's good practice for me. And I'm a pro now in Hindi, like household Hindi yeah. and dogs <laughs> Hindi. <laughs> yeah, Hindi. yeah. Uh, but when you go out and you need to, you know, or there is some serious conversation, especially in Indian household, and everybody's screaming and you don't know what's happening and everybody's talking to you, you're just like lost. So that that is hard. And that also, yeah. but again, it's a thing that you can overcome slowly. It it gets better. You can enroll in classes and, and yeah. it makes a huge difference to be kind of 
feel like a part of the society rather than just like outsider all the time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right. Wow. Thank you for sharing. I feel like I'm looking into a mirror, honestly, because everything you just <laughs> said about your struggles, the same things yeah. I struggled with. Like, I, before I moved here, I, I visited five times and I thought, oh, I'll be fine moving. But like you said, living here, when you have that realization that it's not a holiday anymore, this is your life, you just think, oh, shit. Like, this is very yeah. different. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I can definitely relate to all of those. Um, what about some struggles that you said that you struggled with in the beginning? Do you still struggle with some of those now? I suppose language is probably still a bit of a barrier, but any of the other struggles? Um, so when I talked about a dependency, that is much better because of course yeah. I'm working now and mm. driving uh, finally, so I can just hop in a car and go anywhere, which helped so much. Um, yeah. Now, if somebody is watching this and I watched your previous video with Kat and she talked about a like crazy <laughs> traffic and all. <laughs> so don't think I'm some master driver. I've been having a driver's license for nine years and it's in India that I finally started driving properly <laughs> because I traveled so much. It was Ireland and I was studying in the UK. So I didn't have, uh, you know, the space to practice. And in time when you're just not sitting behind the wheel, you get scared more and more and more. Yes. So I like, I'm not driving, I'm scared. But now uh, it was around last year, I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn how to drive. <laughs> just like one day I woke up and I was like, this has to end. I need to start driving. So um, I just started. I just got my documents ready. I got everything like in motion. I passed my driving exam. I was like, you know what, Teddy, you just have to get out there and you have to just keep driving. Yeah. And now um, it's so funny because now I'm used to it. I feel pretty confident. But what is funny that now when I go home, I'm scared to drive there because I, I <laughs> there are so many I rules. Drive is, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I didn't drive uh, in Australia so for that reason. <laughs> yeah. It's, now here, I feel like there is no rules. You are, you just kind of go with your instinct and you just have to make yourself alive through it. So it's much easier, but there, like you have to know this sign and this sign and you cannot turn here and you yeah. cannot park here. So. Well, now I prefer driving in India <laughs> rather yeah. than in my place. Yeah. Uh, so that definitely helped. Um, the weather struggle is still there. So as I said, mm -hmm. I did not get used to it. And I guess also this might be different for everyone, but mm. even though uh, I feel com comfortable in outside and wherever I go, there is still, you know, you are still different. And it depends where you are, I guess, state by state, city by city. Some people are much more used to foreigners, mm. but uh, I don't see like white folks here at all. So when I go somewhere and, you know, people still stare, so you just have to kind of, you know, uh, get over with it. But uh, sometimes I'm like, okay, why are they staring at me? And then this part in my brain is like, okay, Teddy, that's why, like you're not like them, right? So even though I really like uh, even dressing in Indian clothes, it's very comfortable for me. I feel it will, feels very natural. You are still different. And mm. sometimes that can suck because making friends might be a little harder. Yeah. I feel like here in South, people are a little bit more, um, not unfriendly, but they take their sweet time to open up and they are very shy. Yeah. So, especially um foreigners so that's a struggle like it's hard it's hard yeah. because you feel sometimes you're really alone and even though we have found some friends here um it's still still not like when you're at home mm -hmm. it's still not like you talk to everybody and um you know yeah. But again, it might be just me because I'm not, I'm very introverted. So just yeah. stepping out and actually approaching somebody um, yeah. is like a big task for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, you're still different. You just have to try your best to blend in and learn yeah. the language is a good, uh, good way how to do it, I think. Okay, yes. So about the friends thing, that was, <laughs> it's so funny actually, I think about it now. And I've talked about this in some YouTube videos, but I had like a complete breakdown. Like, I think I had like a massive panic attack. I'd been here for two months. And I think back now and I can laugh because I'm like, two months is nothing in like the big scheme of things. But when it happened, I was like, 
so upset because I hadn't made any friends yet. I never went outside to try and make friends though, mind you, but I hadn't made any friends yet. I couldn't speak the language and I just felt really isolated and lonely. Um, Mm. And I really just kind of got out of my comfort zone and basically like my best friend now, Priyanka, we became friends because I just messaged her one day. I was like, I just moved here. Do you want to get coffee? And Mm. she said, yes. And I know I'm like really, really lucky with that because when you said before, like when you said that you think you might be the only one that feels that way, I have spoken to a lot of foreigners who, who do feel the same as you, where it's really hard to make friends with local people because they might be a bit more reserved or quiet. Maybe there's that kind of fear of language difficulties or barriers and things like that. But I know that I've, I've gotten really lucky with my friend group here um, because I, I did kind of make friends quite early on. Um But yeah, those first two months were probably the hardest. And then, well, you know, like you said before, COVID happened and we lost two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, I know you're right. But I think also maybe we have a lot of assumptions as well. So obviously it's really, really hard. And I think we are way too hard on ourselves because it's a different climate, different language, different food, different everything. It's like you arrived on a planet, like you're on Mars now. (laughs) it does not apply here so yeah. i think that those assumptions and that you know the lack of confidence that we have because we don't know the language and because we are the new world here uh, mm-hmm. sometimes kind of takes us away so you know i think that people who want to move here long term should be more open and really just get out of that country just ring that neighbor's bell because sometimes I even I tell myself I had this assumption of this neighbor of mine like okay she's giving me this like strange looks I better like stay away but then uh, we got uh, to talking and I found out that she's actually so nice yeah so I think lots of the inner fears that we and lots of the assumptions sometimes hold us back and uh, keeps us away from the people that we really need you just need to yeah. build a little bit of support network here so yeah. You can get over the, you know, the hard stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Next question. What do you love about India? Oh, how long did you say this video is going to be? <laughs> <laughs> that is so much. Okay, that is so much. But I'm going to try to think of something that hasn't been said before. Mm-hmm. Mm, what do I love about now? Okay, I think I love that there is always something that surprised me even after four years Mm -hmm. i mean even after going the same road to my student's house i can still see something that i haven't seen before something always makes me laugh or giggle or just you know something crazy that i would be so shocked if i just moved here and now i just like i just like (laughs) grin about it but that is still something uh, that you know it's it's always something that surprises you And uh, I love how different it is. Um, I love how huge it is. And I love how it has everything. So there is everything. There is oceans, there is mountains, there is forests, there is jungles, there is deserts. I feel like India has everything for everyone. Mm -hmm. No matter like what kind of person, mountain person, beach person, you can find, um, you can find everything. I love how in the midst of all the chaos, somehow things still work. (laughs) <laughs> somehow they just managed to get everything done and just it works yeah. and uh, and I guess the convenience also I think uh, you guys have talked about this in the previous episode too so I love how you can get your groceries super quick how you can get services uh-huh. like you know hairdressers and spa uh-huh. and massages and all these things for for quite cheap and it's within your home and then I go home and there is you know no Zepto no Swiggy <laughs> nothing comes so the convenience yeah. is amazing I think I would yeah. miss it but of course I the food of course I think everybody will say that whoever is on this on this episodes of this team foreigners everybody will say food <laughs> I really love Indian food that really surprised me so we with my husband we have fights about dosa because i want dosa every morning and he is like sick of it <laughs> he is like, um but yeah i love south indian food north indian food of course um as well 
And I really love, this might be strange, I really love that um, what, what works well here is like the seasonal veggies and fruits. Yeah. In this, I don't know, in Australia, it's, but in Czech, lots of veggies and fruits are so expensive because everything is imported. Mm. But here, um, you know, for example, now we have mango season, you can get mangoes really cheap. And it, it kind of makes sense. Mm. But of course, I'm heart, heartbroken. I cannot have mango in November. But then it makes you kind of appreciate um, the seasons and it makes mm. you think of, okay, then maybe as a humans, we should eat this way. We should eat seasonal and we should, you know, um, yeah. think about what we consume. So I do love it as well. Yeah. And of course, there will be trillion thousand things that I love, but these are the ones that I can think of right now. Yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. The fruit and veggies is something I love here. And they're so fresh. Like in Australia, um, yes. like mostly pretty much everything grown locally, like within Australia. So we don't have a lot of imported fruit or vegetables, but they have to travel around the country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, here in India, you can get things from yes. like the local farm. They do have farmers markets in Australia, but it is a bit more expensive than things like that. But here, it's so fresh. You know that it's just been like picked up from the market that morning. And yeah, it's just like the variety. And I feel, we don't, yeah. I feel like all the veggies taste absolutely different. Now yeah. we went home, we were for one month, we were at home mm -hmm. in, in Czech and everything is so weird. I was like, mom, <laughs> your sugar is not sweet enough. <laughs> your body is like so different, it's so sweet. Yeah. yeah, it is so funny. It's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So speaking about Czech, even though you've just come home, what are some things you do miss about home? Oh, weather. I do miss the weather, even though okay. I said that now I'm more prone to getting freezed. Um, uh -huh. I love the seasons. Um, I love that. Well, to be honest, right now, the seasons are so messed up. I don't know if it's global warming or what is happening, but, uh, you know, we either get so much snow like way too much snow or none snow at all mm. so but i love season so i miss the autumn i mm -hmm. miss the rain the coolness the ability to wear sweaters uh, yeah. so that's great and uh, of course family um, yeah it's you know it's always hard because if you have um i have nieces and nephews then watching them kind of grow up yeah. without you is really tough and that can get sometimes hard and you're like, you know what, you chose this, like you are here, so it's your fault. But um, <laughs> again, I guess we have to look, take a bit of, you know, step back and just, mm. you know, stay connected as much as possible. Imagine there would be no internet and we could yeah. not see them. It would be, you know, it yeah. would be crazy. And what I miss about home is kind of knowing how everything works everywhere. Yeah. That familiar feeling. You know, yeah. even though we are here for quite a long time and we can get by, there are still things, especially, you know, <laughs> like paperwork and offices, <laughs> banks. Oh There's God. no consistency. Yeah, so that is horrible. But uh, when you're home, home, you you kind of know how everything works. Yeah, you feel definitely. really comfortable. You feel very blended, like I'm invisible. Where I'm from, I'm like, I'm invisible. Yeah. <laughs> you know? was in school sometimes when teachers were handling the exam paper sometimes they would miss my desk and my friend was like daddy is here so, <laughs> so i'm like i'm this like mouse hidden mouse where i'm coming from and now here like everywhere you go you get a look so yeah it, it is strange um yeah but what this is i'm going slightly off topic but what it just got um into my mind right now is that i started working in a yoga studio recently mm. and it was funny because the owner she just was like uh you know communication won't be problem because you already sound like indian it will be fine i was like okay okay no, no worries then so um yeah i feel like i i feel like i belong it's my home but at the same time you're always going away from one home to one home and uh -huh. then you know it's not always you don't have it all yeah you always have to think about leaving one place or the other and it sucks and i wonder yeah, if someday totally feel at home yeah but, yeah that makes me a little emotional <laughs> yeah i know it's, it's it's so hard yeah 
And now when I go home, of course, my dogs are here. So, and they're like my babies. I'm sure you can relate. So yeah. I'm leaving dogs. And then when I go from there, I, I'm leaving my family. And yeah, ugh, that was just, honestly like the hardest thing that I wasn't really expecting when I went back to Australia. It was my first time going back in three and a half years. And I wasn't prepared for so much change. And I wasn't prepared for that it didn't really feel like home anymore. Yes, it's still my country. It's going to be home. But I didn't feel like I had like that home base. And yeah. it was really confronting. I was like, I feel like I don't belong here. I feel like I don't completely belong in India. I'm stuck in the middle of these two countries. Yeah. And mm -hmm. am I ever going to truly feel at home somewhere? And it was just like really upsetting. I know. And you're not alone. I feel exactly the same. Yeah. And I felt guilty for not feeling happy when i came especially after COVID, going home after two and a half years yeah the first week was so hard and it was yeah. so confusing because you're so happy that you're with family that you haven't seen mm. but suddenly it's that reverse counter yeah. shock and yes. it's so hard and i was like i remember i was journaling and then looking back at it and i felt so guilty for not feeling happy while i was there and i knew you yeah. know now i kept reminding myself the second time i was there it's like you know what no matter how much you miss india or how much you you miss that routine and just your own space um you have to enjoy the present moment right yeah. right now so yeah it, it only can relate to that it's really really tough because mm. and so many things change i don't know in your home but i feel like my city is so different from when i left and now that I came back, like so many new places, and I was like, uh -huh. what is this? Really <laughs> wasn't and so you, you almost feel like a foreigner in your own home at the same yes. time. I know. Yeah, I was so actually thinking about this. What do we call that? It's like reverse, reverse culture shock. Like, yeah. I don't know what else to call it because you had reverse culture shock going to your home country. Then you come back to your new home country and get culture shock again. But it's not technically culture shock because this is your home. But it's not yeah. reverse. Like, yeah, I know it, it it's is so confusing. So yes, but I think the fact that we all feel the same is, you know, it makes you feel like, okay, I'm not a crazy person. Yeah, like this is, I guess it is. I yeah. think it's much bigger when you are in some place like India, which is completely 180 degrees different. Yeah, you know, it will be. I lived in the UK and I lived in Ireland for you know two three years. And when I went home, like I was fine. Like I yeah. didn't miss anything. I didn't <laughs> care. I was going yeah. home. But yeah. because everything is so so different, I think yeah. that would make it really hard. Yeah. So yes, I feel like we have very, very, very similar situations and feelings, to be honest. Yeah. Like as I said before, I feel like I'm talking to a mirror. Like we had very similar yeah. um experiences. Now, you did sort of touch on the next question a little bit about what advice you would give to someone wanting to move to India short or long term. So you did say to be very open minded and just get out of your comfort mm -hmm. zone. What else? Yes, for sure. So I think for short term, um, I would say don't try to do so much in so little time. So I now my sister is visiting for the first time and I know when I visited for the first time, I wanted to see everything. but. It's just such a large country that mm. it's not possible. And you will get really overwhelmed by everything that's happening. And, you know, as I said, each state is so different. Mm -hmm. Everything from food, from culture, religion, language, everything is different. So I would say take it one step at a time and come more times if it's possible. And also visit places, you know, beyond the magazines. Like I know everybody wants to see Taj Mahal and I completely relate to it. I like, I wanted to see it too. And um, it's worth to see it, but there are so many beautiful places and, you know, monuments and uh, sightseeing places that are so much worth to see. Mm -hmm. Like for example, in Delhi, I don't know if you've ever seen Akshadam um, in Delhi. Oh, My yeah, parents loved it. Yeah. Um, and they do like a water show there and it's beautiful and my parents actually loved it more than uh, Taj Mahal so um, I would say don't visit don't just go for Taj Mahal but also mm -hmm. research some other places that really worth to see mm -hmm. um, and consider which reason you're going so please don't come to Chennai in June <laughs> because it will just take away from your experience and 
um, yeah. yeah, just really consider the weather. And for long term, that is so um, that is so difficult. Let me think about it one second. Um, long term. Okay, I think for long term, visiting India prior, I think, is great. Yes, because it was kind of suggestion. <laughs> Yeah. Even though we said we still had that shock when mm. we moved here, um, it was, I think it would be much, much worse if yeah. you just moved to India <laughs> and it was your first time visiting. You would be like, yeah. you, know, you would be so freaked out. And um, don't stay isolated. I think that is really important. Don't stay just in the safe four walls of your home, but try to get out, try to travel, talk to people. Um, talk to neighbors, right? talk to the shopkeeper downstairs, just make the first steps, even if they don't talk back, but you made that step and you just tried and you know, you just put yourself out there and just make lots of memories and make it count because you don't know where, I don't know where we will be in, you know, 10 years and um, yeah. just try to enjoy it and don't be hard on yourself and maybe seek some groups like, you know, foreigners that are living in India, which you can yeah. relate to because yeah. back then, I was convinced that I'm the only person of foreign origin living in India, like on this continent. Um, so now that I wish I knew what I know now, that there is just so many people who might feel mm. the same way. So yeah. um, having that support network, I think is important too. Definitely. Which is why I'm doing this series, actually. But yeah, it's amazing. Thing. And you know what? Once you finish this series, I think we should organize some meetup and just all of us meet up. Yes, I know. Seriously. Yeah. I actually, um, over the last, maybe just the one year, basically. Yeah. Um, there's been a few more foreigners that have moved to Chandigarh. So there's now like, there's a few others that aren't, um, that we haven't connected with like in person yet, but there's like a group of four or five of us that try and meet once a month. Um, but at the moment, um, two of them are like traveling back to their home countries or traveling around and, I've been really busy with work and the other one, she can't work yet because she's on a visa, like you said. So, yes, yes but um, we do try and meet up regularly and it does it does help a lot because, mm -hmm. and I've said this in a few other videos and things like that, it's really important to have not only local friends but other foreign friends too. You need to be mm -hmm. able to talk to people that relate to what you're going through because mm -hmm. Sometimes you do want to just have a complaint about like how shitty a situation is or how frustrating a situation is and you can't, mm. can't do it to your husband, you can't do it to your local friends because at the end of the day it's still their country and it can be quite upsetting. So to mm. be able to have those kind of people that you can go to and be like, oh my god, this happened and I'm so annoyed, um, mm. then they can say, oh, I get it, this happened to me too, then you can say, well, you know, it's not just me. So that yeah. is important. Yes. All right. Uh, anything else that you want to add today? Oh my God, my mind is just full of so many things. <laughs> I, I, I mean, that is, we could talk like a whole day about all of this. Right. Right? But uh, your channel would then like explode <laughs> with all the information. Uh, in terms of your social media accounts, I'll put them in the description of the video if people do want to see like, your YouTube channel of when you were doing your singing, I can see the guitar in the background. So I can put all of those if people are interested. Um, yeah, I'll put all of that. Just send me after afterwards. I was about to say after class. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, no. your, your links. Yeah. I usually do because I use uh, the Zoom for my own classes as well. So it feels like, why am I not doing yoga right now? Like, why are we <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, thank you so much, Terry. It's been so nice. Um, I'm really excited now to like edit this and putting it out there. I think it's, your information is going to help a lot of people. So thank you so much again. Thank you so much for having me. If any of foreigners that are watching out in Chennai, please reach out to me. I know nobody. <laughs> no, this sounds so desperate, but um, yeah, if, if anybody is watching it and you're moving to Chennai, just message me and we can get connected and we can share our struggles and Indian food together. <laughs>